If they didn't make money, they were miserable. If they made money, they were happy. And all of their success and happiness was all brought around whether they made more money in that day or not. Is that true? True. But I'll also add this caveat. Some of the people that were making money were still miserable. But yes, for the most part. All right, guys, I told you you were in for a treat today. Welcome, Craig, to the show. Craig, thanks so much for coming on. I'm so excited to be here, Candy. Every time we get together, we create magic. Uh, let's get nuts. Yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. I love your story. I obviously know it. We've connected uh, multiple times before this, and that's why I wanted to have you here. And I think it's important for the audience to know that if they're just meeting you for the first time and they haven't seen you on YouTube and haven't been on your Instagram, and they're, you know, I think some, so often we see people in one way and we forget like who they were. And in this world of, you know, instant influencers, we forget that there's people that have real experience that have actually done things before coming online. And we have that and share that similarity. So can you tell a little bit about before you started what you're doing now, tell people a little bit about your background and what you've really gone through to reinvent yourself in a new way? Yeah, and we do share that commonality. And I love that you made that point because there is a lot of fluff, so to speak, online. So it's good to know uh, that we're in company with people that have actually done some stuff to add some credibility. So I graduated from college. I wasn't one of those cats that knew what I wanted to do. I didn't want to play for the Yankees. I didn't want to go to Hollywood. I was ambitious and I lived in New York. And so ultimately, I ended up on Wall Street. And that was great. I had an opportunity to make money. Um, to get involved with stocks, which was something I was really passionate about. Uh, at that time, I, I was fascinated with stocks and, and stuff like that. And most importantly, when I got to Wall Street, simultaneously, I stumbled upon personal development or human development. And I started to understand that you can actually cultivate confidence. You can work on your mindset. Where you're at now is not an indication of where you could be with, with potential and hard work and so forth. And so I learned discipline and, and I looked around and I saw a lot of people that were having success. And I think this is a key point, too, that's that's really fun uh, to sink your teeth into because oftentimes people compare themselves to other people. If I see people that are doing well, I clap and I don't even have to necessarily like them. It's just that if I see people that are doing well, it just shows what's possible, right? Because then we can do it, if not even better. And so I did the Wall Street thing for a while. And as you can it probably attest to with the stock market being so unpredictable. It was a lot of fun until it wasn't. Ultimately, I ended up pivoting from that and I went to something similar in finance, but I started my own business, very popular industry. Basically, we provided capital to business all across the country, a little bit high interest debt. And although I was making money, if I'm being totally honest and vulnerable, wasn't exactly putting a dent in the universe. And so I found myself in a, in a pretty dark place a few years back. I had just got out of a toxic relationship. My best friend, my dad had gotten diagnosed with cancer. And like I said, even though I was making money, uh, as it turns out, that's just one small component of success. I wasn't having any fun. I was the type of guy that on Mondays was looking forward to the weekend. And it makes me sick to even say that, but I know I needed to go through all that. And then I was looking for an outlet. I, I was trying to find myself. I was drinking more than I'd like to admit because I think I was trying to escape my reality. And I was caught in between this interesting place of anxious of the future, like, is this it for me? But also maybe depressed of the past. Like, I'm not where I'd hoped I'd be. So I found myself in the middle, but I didn't stay there long. I'm not sure if I found running or running found me, but I started running a bunch of marathons, which was great. I wasn't looking to become a professional. I was just looking to find myself, to build some confidence again. And that ended up being the gateway drug, so to speak, into becoming available. And then the pandemic Talk about a historic opportunity to reinvent yourself. And, and I just had this moment, like, if not now, then when? And, and I made myself available. I started getting these spiritual downloads, divine downloads. And it was like, of course, I've been obsessed with personal development for 15 years. I've been studying. I've been taking notes. What are my gifts? Everybody's got them. Humbly, I could communicate pretty effectively. It was pretty scary. I had 300 Instagram followers at the time, which you can argue is less than zero. I didn't have any connections or anything like that. But for me, the cost of inaction was way too high. And I made it very real for myself, Candy. I actually associated death with going back after lockdown and choosing to be miserable. And so literally the very next day in a run, it came to me, my CLS brain, Cultivate Lasting Symphony. I always love that word symphony. I'm a strange cat. It's also my initials, Craig Landed Seagull. Put together a whole strategy. I hit the ground running. I burned the boat, so to speak, and I never looked back. 
Mm, such a cool story. And what I love that you shared, number one, thanks for being vulnerable, right? So often people don't want to talk about the things that they were drinking too much or they were trying to escape because they want this persona. And I think it's yeah. so important when we pull the curtain back to really share when you're growing, when you're trying to be successful, when you're achieving, that there are real things that, that happen and we need to self-evaluate what's going on. So if we can look back, obviously you weren't happy. You realize that you were waiting for the weekend. You started drinking too much, right? I think oftentimes people are trying to escape their reality so they find an addiction. That addiction may not be drugs or alcohol for someone listening. It may be what I call destination addiction, doing the next goal, the next project, the next dream, right? And they're never really living where they are. For you, when you think back, obviously now because it's clearer, when you look back, what was the one thing that you were feeling? Because I think people struggle with this, but they don't know what it is. Like, what were you feeling every day that was finally the tipping point that you said no more? Like, I would rather not be, I'd rather lose what's comfortable and step into uncertainty to go for what's great. What a beautiful question. And I appreciate that. And for me, I, I knew I was always here for more. I believe we all are. There's greatness inside all of us. But specifically, I always felt called. Like I, I was meant to do something special and really make an impact. And, and I just found myself so comfortable and miserable that to me, I, I did this eulogy exercise. And I was like, if this was it for me in two weeks from now, like what would people say at my funeral? Who would come? And if I'm being honest, like what was my legacy, if any? What impact contribution did I make? And it was at that moment that I realized that if that was it for me right now, I could not, no pun intended, live with the fact that I didn't give life everything I got. And so from that moment, I realized that the only thing scarier than stepping into something totally new at 35 years young at the time would be to stay doing what I'm doing. And, and essentially, I was starring in a movie called Existing. Uh, I mean, it, it was bad. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm just putting myself, and I think that a lot of people, in fact, do I dare say most, are they know deep down that they're here for something more than they're currently doing. You're gonna spend about a third of your life in your career, you better love it. And I speak from conscience because I didn't for so long. And I just got to this point, not to sound too cliche, I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. I didn't have this like huge catastrophe, it wasn't like shot in war or, or lose my arm to a shark. I just, I just had enough. And my pain was my pain. Everybody's going through something. My emotional pain w w was mine. And I never really took time to reassess because I was so invested in this story, this movie, that this was it for me. I'm a Wall Street guy, I make some money, I live a really fall in love. And then it occurred to me at the beginning of the pandemic when I just took a second, realized that my thoughts are not facts. I'm now a witness to my thoughts. They're happening with or without me. I get to choose which ones I want to invest in. Because thoughts are random, thinking is not. And then from that very moment, I stopped thinking about what can go wrong and I started doubling down on what can go right. And for the first time in my life, I started to get real clarity and it felt so aligned and I felt called. And from that moment, bang, hit the ground running and the rest is history. Yeah, I love what you said. I've never heard the word thoughts, but my quote is always, your feelings are not facts, <laughs> right? Mm. We often yeah. think one thing, we feel one thing, and then we get caught up in it to remember that there is an alternative. And that feeling that you're feeling, feelings are fleeting, right? You can wake up one day and like, I know you can wake up, wake, be angry because you're in traffic. The next minute you're super happy. It's like they're fleeting. So we sometimes right. give them far more power than they need to. And what I heard you say was about shifting your identity, right? You were, you were, your identity that you wrapped up in was this Wall Street guy. You went to college, you know, you were making good money, I would assume on Wall Street being successful. When you decided, didn't have a rock bottom moment, which so many people do, but you were just tired of living that life. And you had to create a new identity, which I know after being in business for 25 years and exiting my last company, moving across the country, I had a big identity shift because I was being, I was seen behind the scenes in all of these businesses. Now I'm coming front. It's tough. It's harder than most people think to have an identity shift, even when it's your choice. What mindset did you have to have or what are some of the active things you did in order to be okay with the unknown in this new identity? Yeah, and I think I did have a rock bottom moment a few years back. That same time when I got out of that toxic relationship and my dad had got diagnosed with cancer, that was it for me. I, I was just so miserable. And for me, it was all about identity. 
once I realized that I can work on myself, essentially like an artist working on clay, like at any time, anybody can change. They could choose a different story. They can invest in that. And so just to be clear, it wasn't only a a career identity that changed. It was my whole life. I just got engaged last summer. I mean, I'm essentially a whole new person. And, And I stopped holding on to the things that were bringing me down. A lot of them were negative thoughts. A lot of them was energy, some of the people I was surrounding myself with. And just to be clear, I take full responsibility and accountability for ex- being exactly where I am. And I wouldn't change a thing because the amount of success we've had over the last two and a half years, I believe was a result of the previous 15 combined. I just finally put it all together. So I think when it comes to mindset with something like this, like I, I think the biggest risk that anybody can take is playing it safe in life. That's not why we're here. Like you're not supposed to get to the end of your time whenever that is like, dealership quality, like looking great. You want to be like used, abused, like you gave this thing everything you got. And I can honestly say, since I reinvented myself, I lived more in the last two years than than the previous 35 combined. And I just got to this point where it's like, is there a guarantee that this is going to work out? No, but here's what I can guarantee. If I stay put, I'm going to be miserable and I'm literally dying a slow death. So I've been successful at things that I didn't even love or weren't natural to me like Wall Street, the finance, running marathons, all these things. This personal development stuff, like talking to you right now, this isn't work to me. I love this stuff. I'm all in. And even if I don't get it at first, I'm determined, resourceful, and creative enough to find out what didn't work and why and apply it. And that just gave me so much enthusiasm. And and I started to get excited. And, And I think being enthusiastic and having excitement and wanting to get out of bed in the morning and not leaving the alarm clock, I think that's the key to stay inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, you said mindset and you said surroundings, the people that you were surrounded with. If you had to, which one do you think is more important than the other? Do you think it's mindset? Do you think it's surrounding yourself with other people? You know, I think that if you surround yourself with the right people, but you're not available, right, emotionally or mentally, I don't know how far you can get. Like for me, I had to finally become available. Right. And for example, for for your listeners, like you can read a book or watch a movie a second time in a different season of life and have a totally different experience. Why? Because you're available. Right. Like, for example, I I recently reread The Secret and I just, it hit me so much differently. I don't think I've left the quantum since. So I think mindset is really first and foremost the key to everything. Because if you have, if you, if you're working on yourself, if you're staying mentally fit, you're going to understand that it's in your best interest to surround yourself with people that can elevate you, that might be a little bit further ahead, or that can support you and encourage you, right? Because you're available and and you have that understanding. But on the flip side, if you're around high achievers, but like you just have a bad attitude or or you're like jealous, then whatever the case may be, I don't know how far you get with that. So long story short, I, I think mindset, if I had to choose one, takes the cake. Yeah, I think it's so true. And, you know, it's the thought too, is if you don't have the right mindset and you're around those people, you're actually not going to be able to pull value from that experience. And those people are going to feel your energy and not want you there. So it's like, you got to start with that first. And I always say, it's not just mindset. Like that's the first step. It's not the only step, but it is a large piece of the puzzle to have that belief, to be okay, to make mistakes, to go after it. And then you just figure out the rest. Like, that's really what I'm sure you've done as well. But you also touched on something without saying that, that I'm interested to know. Was there any spiritual things that happened along the way that maybe you didn't have in your prior life? Because I'm, I'm picking up that like there's been some like spiritual side of this journey yeah, as well. 100%. Uh, uh, yes. Um, you know, I totally reinvented myself emotionally, spiritually. I used to not believe in this energy vibrational stuff because I was such a mindset guy through and through that it was beyond my senses. It was hard for me to fathom because I'm pretty practical. When I reread The Secret a couple of years back, and ironically, a lot of them have become my good friends, I just started to finally understand this is a vibrational universe, right? You don't manifest what you want, you manifest what you are. And the reason why that's so pivotal is for anybody listening right now, if you're not getting the results that you desire in this life, it's feedback that you're sending off that type of signal at any time. I truly believe that. Everyone knows those days where you're on fire, you can't be stopped, you're you're closing every deal, you're approaching the pretty girl at the bar or the hands, whatever the case may be, you can't be stopped. What if you can tap into that daily? Can you imagine what you can achieve? 
And so once I started really buying in and letting go of the fact that, oh, you know, that's that's a little too woo-woo for me. And just to be clear, I, I think you should combine the spiritual with the practical. And that's a recipe for abundance and success. But yeah, I really started buying into this. I also quadrupled down on my faith. I'm being honest with you. I grew up Jewish. Uh, I was never super religious, but over the last few years, my relationship with God means everything to me, and it's never been strong. It gets stronger every single day. So between having that, my faith, the spirituality stuff, and understanding frequencies and vibrations and, and setting your intentions and divorcing from the outcomes, yes, there's been some major quantum shifts for sure. And I believe once you get in that frequency for anyone listening, you can start to quantum leap in life. For example, you can collapse time. You can accomplish what would typically take someone 10 years, maybe in two. Yeah. And do you think that that same, you know, your relationship with God, your mindset, do you think that the growth that you've had in the last couple of years, if you would have stayed on Wall Street and just changed your focus on it, right? Because we either can change it or we change the way we view it, right? Nobody likes to pay taxes. We can't change it. We can change the way we view it and some of our strategies to pay less, but we can't actually change that fact. Do you think that you could have done that staying? Because I think often people think, well, I just need to stay a little longer at this and look at it differently. Do you think you would have had the same growth if you just viewed it different? 100% no. That w- I was the gladiator in the wrong arena. And just to be clear, I don't trade it for the world because I learned so much about myself, discipline, heartbreak, setbacks. That's all a part of the journey. But that's not why I'm here. My assignment, I, I believe, is to make a major impact and to extract people's potential and show them what's possible, help them believe in themselves and so forth. So no, if I had stayed that course, it wouldn't have been a pretty ending at all. And I had to remove myself or the lockdown provided me a historic opportunity that I took advantage of. I know it was an opportunity for everybody. A lot of people chose Netflix and day drinking. That wasn't going to be me. Um, And I really leaned into it. So to answer your question, no, I had to get out of that environment and kind of just for the first time, just being mindful. I believe being mindful is the portal to expansion. And once I slowed down for a second and, and reassessed and realized that's not for me, what do I, why am I really here? What do I love? What am I good at? What do I feel called to? That's when I was able to put it all together. It's good. And it's, I just think it's a testament to realize that if anyone listening is struggling with that place that they're in, it's so important. Like everyone's situation is different. And I always say you may not be in a position where you can just burn the boats and go all in on this one thing without yes. at least assessing what you've got going on, right? If you've got four kids and you're a sole provider yeah. or, or a main contributor to the household, that may be reckless advice. But what can you do to take the steps forward in order to start exploring that? And if someone's I, I listening that. to that and they want to maybe take those steps, do you have, because I know obviously with your book coming out, do you have a, uh, a step-by-step or at least a guide for someone to kind of, this is what you can maybe start to do to really reinvent or to take this next step in whatever it is that you want to create? Yeah, 100%. And I love that you said that because I talk about this in the book too. I want to be responsible. I know not everyone's in the same position, right? Some people can't just quit their job tomorrow, start a side project and blow up, so to speak. So I think to each their own. But here's what I will say. I believe everything is figure outable. I, I know Marie Forleo loves to say that, and I agree. And here's what I mean. Let's say you do have a job that you don't like. You do have a lot of responsibilities, kids, whatever the case may be. Could you maybe at the end of your day allocate some time to working on your side project? Can you journal? Can you make a list of all your strengths, right? Can you ask people close to you for some feedback, what they think you're good at? Can you take some proactive steps into figuring something else out that would light you up? And I also believe that when you really get into alignment and do something that you're really, really passionate about, I believe you tested this early in the conversation. You don't have to worry so much about the how. I believe making money and stuff like that, monetizing is a byproduct and it's an energetic exchange. I I truly believe that. Um, I I love some of the challenges being proven me wrong, but I, I believe if you go all in with something that you love, you can offer a service of some sort. So for, and we talk about this literally for 90 day runway, like 90 days to work on your side project to make it a thing. 100% you can allocate the time to start doing research. Let's be honest, 2023 with YouTube, audio books, your book, um, podcast, there's so much information out there. There's literally no excuse to not hyper-focus on something and understand how to apply it. 
Oh, my gosh. And this is a quote from my book. It's not the information that's at lack. It's not the lack of information that people have. It's the lack of execution. People don't apply, right? It's like the information, it's almost paralysis in a sense because there's so much information. So I always say like, don't try to know, you don't need the turn by turn directions. If you got in your car and it gave you like 45 steps, we'd all be overwhelmed and not want to go anywhere. But it just says, go 50 feet, make left. That's all you need to know until you then get on that road and go. And how has that been for you? I mean, completely new area obviously there's no way any entrepreneur it's not sunshine and rainbows like like social media makes it look to be what was the process like of your build what were some of the habits that you had to develop because when someone's managing your time like a boss you show up you do the stuff when you have your own schedule now you've got to manage your time how has that process looked like for you yeah so in in the last two years since i went all in on cls in two years time we created one of the most downloadable entrepreneurial podcast on the planet sponsored by Mark Cuban. We're speaking all over the world. We just got a record first time book deal, community membership, masterminds, all the things. And one of the reasons that I was able to, we were able to accomplish all that in what most people consider a relatively short amount of time is this. I have that long game mentality handy. Like I I love this stuff. This is what I'm going to be doing in some capacity for the next 70 years, God willing. And I'm not like married to one specific thing. Like I'm open as long as it's in the, in this realm, so to speak. So every single day, my habits and rituals is I marry the process and I divorce the outcome. Of course, I have a whiteboard, a vision board. I have intentions, right? I wanted the book deal. I want to be speaking all over the world. I want all those things because that's how I can make the biggest impact. But then I divorce from it and I release and I say, well, what can I do today to get a first down, right? And for my non-football fans out there, like you don't need to score a touchdown every single day, but there, there's small steps, I believe, every single day that you can control effort-wise where you can get a first down. So for me, and everybody's different depending upon what they're trying to do, like when I first started to brand myself, which was tough because number one, I didn't have a following and I'm an introvert, which might surprise you and your listeners. But one thing that I can control is I could go into lookalike audiences, people that were in the same space, Tony Robbins, so to speak, and introduce myself and meet some people and put out some content. See, if you like this, I also have a community myself, come check it out. And I started to build a buzz and I was creating that Hollywood hype. And every single day I was so excited to just extend my reach I wasn't, I didn't have expectations on, oh, how can I make $100,000 today, right? Or how can I get some figures next week? I just wanted to extend the reach and make more of an impact. And stuff like that, I can control because that comes down to effort. So for anyone that's really going for it or wants to reinvent themselves, you have to fall in love with the journey. And the last thing I'll say is this, like, the championship ring isn't even guaranteed, right? But the struggle is. So you got to fall in love with the day to day. Doesn't mean you have to love every single thing that you do, but you have to be inspired to do the not so pretty stuff on a daily basis. And when you do that, it compounds. And I understood that when I reinvented myself and leaned into this. Oh my gosh. I, (laughs) it's like that football analogy. I don't think I've heard that one that way, but what kept popping in my mind was move the chains. What do you need to do to move the chains forward? And we're in this bubble. I don't know if it's social media that did it, but when I came out and came online and I saw everybody glamorizing entrepreneurship and how it's all sunshine and rainbows. And I'm like, whoa, what am I doing wrong? Because that's not been my life's journey for the last 20 years. But if you don't look at just loving every single minute, but you love the process of growth and focus on moving the chains forward, that's the only way you ever get to play in the championship game. And I think so often people are measuring their success on whether they win the championship as opposed to just moving the chain for each one of those downs, to use your analogy. And so I love that. Could you be on any more fire? I couldn't agree more. And let's be honest, with those first downs, moving the chains, I believe in, and I think you agree, you can control getting a first down every single day. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's like wealth. Those compound just like interest. They compound over time. And so exactly. there's so many analogies that can be brought back to wealth. And I just want to touch on it for a second because I think obviously with your background on Wall Street, you know, you were around everybody that was so focused on money. I'm sure, this is me guessing, that most of the people you were hanging around 
If they didn't make money, they were miserable. If they made money, they were happy. And all of their success and happiness was all brought around whether they made more money in that day or not. Is that true? True. But I'll also add this caveat. Some of the people that were making money were still miserable. Still miserable. Yes, for the most part. <laughs> what, do you think, what do you think that is? What do you think it is in someone that no matter what, they're, they, you know, they want to be happy when they're a millionaire. They want to be happy when they're a best-selling author. They want to be happy when they have 14 houses, and they're never happy. What do you think that person is actually missing out on? They're missing the point. And I know this from contrast because I used to be one of those cats, Candy. Here's the the game changer. It's not the thing that's going to activate the lit soul. It's not the money, the car, the relationship, the best-selling status, any of that. Because once you get that, if you get that, you're just going to be thinking about the next thing and, and it never ends. Or if you don't get it, then you consider yourself to be a failure. So the key is what I've learned on my journey is first you activate that lit soul and you fall in love with who you are and what you're doing. And ironically enough, when you get into alignment and you're enthusiastic and you're excited and you're cool with where you're at and you can improve, you end up manifesting the things that you thought you needed to activate the lit soul, right? And and like first you become it and then you see it. So first you activate yourself, you get on fire, you you elevate your vibe, you become a vibrational match for all the wealth, the abundance, all that stuff out there. And then all the stuff comes to you. It's not the other way around. And if someone is able to comprehend this concept, then you could start falling in love with the process, the journey. Instead of making certain things magical, you can make every single moment magical by being super present and mindful. And then Life is great because you're not relying upon something specific to make you happy. That's so good. And if if anyone, you know, whatever, if something happened while you're driving, pause this and rewind because I think there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of wisdom there. I think it's so important because I hear so many people that from the outside view are very successful, but they are not happy. And I think when we measure our success on a number or a goal specifically and not into just moving the chains daily, that that's what kind of sets us up to not fail at the goal, but to fail in life. And coming from the world that you came in, being around all those people and self-proclaiming that you were like that too, did it take time for you to adjust, you know, because our nervous systems are so wired sometimes for certain things that we're used to. I know I was in a toxic relationship like you had mentioned you were. Does it take time for you to kind of come down and reset that nervous system to measure success and growth differently? What was that process like for you? Yeah, so if I'm being honest with you, I'm not the same cat I was three months ago. I'm working on myself every single day. And ironically enough, now it's technically my job, right? It's part of my career to sharpen the ax, to get better so I could pour it back into the audience and the community. But I love this stuff so much. When I first reinvented myself, made that transition, I didn't quite get that yet. I I thought I still had to achieve certain things. But shortly thereafter, from doing a lot of inner work and and working on my inner game, I started to realize, hold on a second, I get to do this. I'm falling in love with extending the reach, cultivating relationships, putting out content, helping people. That's what it's all about. Yes, I have intentions, I have audacious goals and all that stuff, but I'm not attached to those. I'm attached to growing each and every single day. And once I had this realization, literally like that, I just started falling in love with the Manushka, the the day to day, and then everything ended up taking care of itself. And ironically, once I did that, I started having those huge quantum leaps because I wasn't so fixated on these big things where I was actually creating resistance because I desired them so much. I think desire can be deadly. And so once I made this quantum shift, when I had this breakthrough for me early on into CLS, everything changed, but it didn't take that long. It just took awareness. So I know there's going to be listeners that are like, okay, I desire things. Am I living in a low vibration? Like what does it look like tactical? Cause I know you're tactical. So I can ask you this question. Some people could not answer this question. I know you'll be able to, when you want to apply the law of attraction to at least help work in your favor. Now you're not just sitting on your couch manifesting. I'm going to be successful. Like you're going out, you're doing the work every day. 
How do you apply that? How do you not desire something so bad that it lowers your vibration? Just by the simple awareness that you know if you want something so bad, you're creating resistance to not having it, right? So for me, I want something. I I put the intention out there. I set a goal. Great. Now we reverse engineer it. Okay, that's out there. It's good to have a target because you can't hit a target that you can't see. But now after we work backwards, all right, well, what's step one? What do I have to do today? So just to be clear, like even like when, when I reinvented myself and I met my fiance, I was jaded from toxic relationships. The truth is I was repeating the similar pattern. That's on me. But yeah, I want, I didn't give up on it, but I stopped focusing on it. If it happens, great. All I'm going to do that I can control is work on myself, be available. Just like that, when I was least expecting it, we crossed paths and, and now we're engaged and the rest is history. So I've learned from experience. So I think it's very important to have intentions. You should have a desire because it shows passion. But understand that if you give too much energy to that specific target or desire, you're actually creating resistance. So be very careful. Have some intentions and then divorce from that and say, well, what's step one to get there? What do I have to do now that will end up leading me on the path? At the end of the day, it's not the destination. It's who we become on the journey. And once you realize that, you'll know. It's good to have targets, but really, it's about the day-to-day growth on my way to those desires. Mm, It's so, so true. And what I love you said that made me think of like that resistance. And I see so many, and this is something I did in my own life. Like I had so much resistance to things. And so then I would just force harder because I believe that if there's resistance, it's just another wall I got to break down and go through, right? Not to realize that some of those walls you're trying to kick down are actually not for you, right? Like sometimes if the resistance is so great and you're trying to force, it may be that you're trying to force something that isn't for you because I'm sure like you, if you would, if we would have been having this conversation three years ago, I know for me, just even three years ago, I would not have known what was available, Like sometimes, like you said, like enjoy the process and the destination because you may be going somewhere far better than you can even imagine right now. Like if someone had told me at 19 when I started my first company, the house I'd be living, like, of course I manifested a lot of that and I had vision, but I also worked my ass off. Like if someone would have told me the way my life looks now, I may not have even been able to understand it because we don't know what we don't know. So being open to the process and enjoying the journey, I think is so critical. Has there ever been a point in your journey that you have felt that resistance and you kept trying to force? Is that kind of when you were on Wall Street? Like, do you feel that you were forcing in that way? Yeah, for about 35 years. (laughs) If I'm being honest. And and like you, I think we have similar personalities. It's a, you're a go-getter, right? And, And like you rely upon yourself, you take pride in work ethic. And if there's a wall in front of you, I'm just gonna break it down. But now I'm a little more enlightened, (laughs) right? Yeah. Realize that maybe, just maybe, that's something bigger, protecting, propelling, and promoting you to a different direction, right? And and so you just have to be so aware of that. Now, if there is a lot of resistance, let's just take a second. Instead of reacting, let's respond. Why is there so much resistance? Is it possible that maybe that's not in alignment for me and that's not the right path and, and I'm being directed somewhere better? that's more in alignment. And when you're in that frequency, you don't have to worry so much about the how, right? You, you just pay attention to your energy, so to speak. So yes, I spent a long time in that frequency, which is why I'm so passionate about reinvention and all this stuff that we're doing now is because I have such contrast because I know what it feels like to be miserable, to be stuck, to just work and, and grind and not be enlightened and, and all that stuff. And I want to help other people as well. So yeah, I spent a long time there. Yeah. Well, thanks for being honest and vulnerable because I think a lot of people do. And I think there are a lot of people that are listening that are as well. I meet a lot of entrepreneurs that are forcing. um, And sometimes that door is just not for you to kick down. Maybe you learned something getting to the door, right? It's it's the process of getting there, but maybe you're not actually supposed to go in it because there's another one. It makes me think of uh, deal or make a deal with the three doors, you know, like that old show. It's like maybe there's a junk car behind the door and you're actually supposed to be, you're created for something much better. 100%. Coming from the background that you had and now having more of a spiritual journey and being more open and what do you think, what is wealth to you? What does that mean to you now as opposed to maybe if we asked that question 10 years ago? 
Yeah, what a great question. And I just posted about this yesterday. And let me tell you what success or wealth is not. It's not dominating in just one area. And I used to think that making money made you successful. I was much more immature and unenlightened, right? Because I was making a lot of money and I was very unhappy. So that's not success. And everybody's got a definition of success. Mine, right now in this season of my life, I think it's based upon how happy I am or how much peace do I have in my life, right? But ultimately, I think success is many things. I think it is, of course, financial. I think it's your career. I think it's your fitness journey. I'm a big believer in that. I think it's your relationships. I think it's your faith. And I never really liked the word balance, but I think if you can strive to be successful in all those categories, then you're on your way. If you're striving towards something, if you're improving, if you're getting better, to me, that's real wealth. Because I know from contrast that having money in a bank account doesn't make you wealthy, so to speak. Yeah, it might mean that your, your account is higher, but that, that's nothing in the grand schemes of life. So wealth or success or whatever word you like to use it is striving to get better and to grow and achieve tranquility and peace and happiness in all those areas, in my opinion. Mm, it's so good. It's so true that there are people that can have wealth from a net worth stand, standpoint, but they can be bankrupt in so many other areas of their life. You know, like the 100%. billionaire that their kids don't even want to come home for Christmas. You know, right. you hear stories yeah. like that all the time. I know somebody massively successful, not billions, but hundreds of millions, no relationships with his kids. You know, so it's all great and fine and it's what everybody's really trying to achieve. But if, you, if it's at the expense of all these other areas, what's the point? And you can't take that to the grave with you. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's so good. So I want to talk to people just about a little bit of, you know, your book. We have the same publisher, which is super cool. They've been awesome to work with. Um, tell Agreed. what is the book about and who is it for? Who can really benefit from the reinvention formula? This book is for anybody that feels a little bit stuck or maybe that there's more out there for you than you're currently settling for, or maybe that it's too late or all that abundance is just not in the cards for you. This book is to show you that that's not true. It's available and it's ready when you are and how to get there, just like I did over the last two years. Um, the book is very unique in the sense that I've read in a, a plethora of self-help books and personal development and all this stuff. And what I created is something that I haven't seen before. And yes, it includes my journey, my story and so forth. But I had been studying personal development for 15 years now, and I've been documenting all of it. I would always sharpen the ax from psychology, emotional intelligence, NLP, law of attraction, Kabbalah, just historic figures, you name it. I've been taking notes and I've been cultivating it. And I put it out to use to have success in business and running marathons, but I wasn't fulfilled. And then when I put it all together and I started CLS and hit the ground running, I have put all this information that I've been cultivating into one vessel, the reinvention formula. I'm really proud of it. You know, you can't ever guarantee uh, commercial success and stuff like that. Of course, you want your book to do great. Um, but I know this, that anybody that reads it, that knows that there's something else out there for them is going to be inspired that it's true. No matter where you're at in your journey, how old you are, yes, it is out there. And even maybe more importantly, how to get there emotionally, spiritually, physically, all the tools. Mm, yeah. And I know just from this process that it is one of those nervous things because I've just been through it. But even yeah. if I know this book's going to change so many lives, but I've often said, even if it just changes one, right? The one person that didn't have hope, that thought that they, it wasn't available for them because everybody else had some other background that they didn't have. And if it just does that, was it worth writing? 100% home run. Yeah, right. And so I love that you wrote this. I love to have another voice in the space talking about personal development because it's so needed. It's so needed. We can give them all the strategies, but if you don't have the right mindset, we're going to be swimming up, <laughs> swimming uphill together. So um, yeah. please tell everyone, how can they find out more of you if they, if they don't follow you already? Where are all the things and where can they get the book? Yeah, anywhere uh, you buy books, the reinvention formula, um, anywhere you listen to podcasts, the record breaking, the CLS experience. Uh, if you want to check out a community, mastermind, stuff like that, speaking, cultivatelastingsymphony.com, 
But what I like most is, is for to come say hello on social media at Craig Siegel underscore CLS. I love to communicate. I love to interact with everyone. A lot of times people will say, this isn't really Craig, it's his team member. To the best of my ability, obviously it's tougher now. I try to respond to everybody that I can. And if you like free inspirational nuggets, we have a, a free texting community. Uh, just text 917-634-3796. Text the word candy uh, so I know that you heard this conversation. And come say hello. I love it. I love what you're doing. I, You know, it's funny. Being in this space, I meet a lot of guys, obviously. And with what I do, I have a decent-sized guy audience, too, where most females only play in the female space. And when I met you, it's rare for me to, like, feel comfortable and safe with someone and be okay to have a conversation like right out of the gate. And just when we connected a few times, I loved your energy. I felt that way. So I just want to thank you for just not what you're doing, but how you show up and just kind of creating that like, you know, environment that people like me feel comfortable to to talk with you. Yeah. And so I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you that. so much for saying that. To be honest with you, that right there penetrates my soul and that's what it's all about. And I feel the same towards you. And the best part is, is it's just the beginning of the friendship. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Um, everybody, seriously, go grab the book, The Reinvention Formula. We'll have all the, the stuff linked in the show notes. Um, you can follow Craig on Instagram or check out that website that he shared. And you can also join that text community with the word candy. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing with the audience. My pleasure.